Morning guys. So uh, it's Monday, May 17th. Um, we were spraying all day yesterday and normally I take Sundays off, but uh, there was some rain supposed to be coming in here this week. Um, the wind is definitely supposed to pick up and we needed to take advantage of a good spray day there yesterday. So we're just about done spraying. We only got one load left to put out. So I'm gonna fire up the truck, air it up. And I think we have a tire guy over here. Uh, my drills moved up here, so. Oh. And I forgot the key, it's in the house. Round two, this is how I like to start my Monday mornings. I like to go by forgetting the key. Awesome. Yeah, I know, I need a new windshield, right? All this happened this spring. Great big crack down there and another one right there and it just kind of scissored its way up. We go through, this is a two-piece windshield, thank goodness. And we'll go through this driver's side windshield probably a couple times a year. So we gotta let this thing air up. All right, well, it's doing that. Uh, we're gonna drive over. So we got the drill moved up here, as you guys already know. And uh, it was a 565 kilometer move. And the drill didn't even come from home. We were at our farthest north field. We were like 70 miles away from home. So uh, it's a very long move. So anyway, the result of the, such a long move is uh, those great big high flow tires on the front. They don't like that kind of road, long move. I was gonna say road speed, but uh, it got pulled at 35, 30, between 30 and 35 kilometers an hour. That's what it got pulled. So it got pulled pretty slow. About as fast as we would move it with the tractor. So it got pulled with the semi, FYI. So let's go over there. I think we're getting some tires put on it here. Okay, okay. Okay, well that truck's warming up. Man, is my windshield dirty with bugs now, eh? Welcome to spring. Um, we're gonna run over here. Uh, the drill's right close. It's parked. Um, do we leave? Like I said, we have a tire guy there. I'll explain a little bit more when I get there. Point into the field here. There's the drill. So here's the thing, guys. Um, I know, right? Like seeding beard. I don't do seeding beards. I don't do playoff beards. I always just shave on a Sunday and we work last Sunday. And then we worked actually the Sunday before, but believe me, this is only one week because I can't stand here. It's actually a pet peeve of mine. But anyway, we're we're uh, we're rabbit trailing. So I'm just gonna give you a stop here for a second. This drill roaded 565 kilometers to get up here one way, okay? And that didn't, this drill did not come from home because you guys already knew that we were like 75 plus or more miles away from home. You see how I'm going kilometers and miles? I'm trying to, you know, metric system plus my American neighbors down there. Um, it's kind of best of both worlds. Anyways, we probably put on roading the drills ourselves. We probably do 300 miles to, oh, I don't know if we do 300 miles a year, but we do a lot of roading ourselves. You know, it's definitely 200, maybe 250 miles a year uh, per drill just on ourselves. But anyways, um, the drill came up here. Uh, remember I told you that uh, Fountain Tire, Moose Jaw Fountain Tire, they came down and they stuck some new boots on the back for us. They got rid of the 16.5s that were on there and uh, that which came factory and they put updated versions in. And so we're gonna go talk about that a little bit because guess who's here? Fountain Tire again, and believe me, they're about three and a half hours away uh, from here because we're nowhere near Moose Jaw. And when they came down, when we were seeding down there prior to the move, I think they had to drive another three or so hours. So definitely uh, huge props to them and uh, their business over there. So let's go over and say hi. And as I was saying, these uh, big floats, they don't like the move. Okay, they don't like they don't like roading. They were never designed for roading, so they heat up. So let's just grab my mic here. It's a little bit breezy, and let's go have a conversation. All right, so these are the new boots that they put on the back. These are definitely an upgraded version of what came factory. Let's go talk to John. I do believe John's like the owner of the operation. These are the tires that were taken off. Maybe he can walk us through this a little bit. 
He doesn't know I'm here. Hey, John. John. Hello. Is it John? Yeah. Mike Mitchell. <laughs> So what he's doing here, this tire right there, he's taking that one off. This tire went on us on the highway. Uh, so we actually had to get another tire company out uh, to get, get us off the road. The, the boys over there at Watch Us at Integra, thank you guys. Um, but that's not the tire that we want because that's the same tire that we took off. We are putting upgraded versions on, okay? Just like we put upgraded versions on the back, we're putting upgraded versions on the front. We're, put, we're going VF. Versus just your standard run of the mill. Uh, good year. Good for one year. No, I'm <laughs> um, So anyways, that is what we're doing here. So John's going to walk us through these uh, differences because we're putting upgraded versions on, right John? Correct. These are the VF 865-32. Yep. So it's a CFO tire. What's so a CFO? It's like a load rating. So it's you get 20% more carrying capacity or you okay. can ride with 20% less air. Okay. 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 And uh, where are these tires made? Do you know? Uh, Alliance is made by Yokohama. Alliance should become our Israel. Israel? Sometimes okay. India, yeah. Sometimes India. Got it. They're a division of Yokohama. And so... This tire that you just took off, it's got all these black marks. It looks like it's wet, but it's not. What is this? What's going on here? By what it looks like, and I've seen it before, is, is heat generation where the tire starts coming apart. So the tire's coming apart internally? That's what it looks like. It was the, the cut you showed the other day. Yeah. That's what, that's what it looks like. I've seen them earlier this year, too, on a big, long road from they went to Kyle, Saskatchewan, where they... They had, I believe it was fire zones on at the time, and they, okay. they heat separated and started to get all lumpy. Okay. So it's 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 hard on the tires to rode them. Okay. But that's why we're going to... These VF ones? The VF. That's the biggest carrying capacity we can get. Okay. You know, we would stay in the same size tire. Okay. So we gain 20% more air, 20% less, 20% more capacity. It should help out a lot, right? Okay. Awesome. And how about the tires on the back? Because you guys sent... Uh, Scott down there to change these tires before we even came. So these tires back here, guys, in case you didn't know, um, these got changed prior to even prior to the move. So we these are a bigger rim too, right? You actually put different rims on. Uh, you got these rims painted, I do believe. Yeah, correct. These are it's a 22.5 wheel and it's a 445.50 R22.5 VF uh, Alliance Agriflex 381. Okay. They're the same size as the 16.5, 16.1s. Okay. But you're getting well, over 12,000 pounds carrying capacity uh, or 20% less air. So you're, you're double your, more than double your carrying capacity. Up so the 16.5s 16 16 that we did take off, they were only a 6,000 pound load capacity. 6,450, I believe. Wow. And then these are like 12,000. So yeah. double the load capacity. Double the load, yeah. So I just got off the phone with uh, Jay there, and he said he's the guy who moved it. I think he clocked about 565 kilometers to get up here yeah. from the point where it left at our farm, which was the northern part of our farm. And it still has the little, uh, whatever you call these things. Yeah, it does. It, like, they, that's pretty dang good. The nice thing of this is it's so much wider and you have a flat footprint. Yeah. Uh, you have the radial technology in the tire and also the VF technology compared to your 16.5, 61 yep. bias tires. Okay. Right? So. I've never seen that, that you can go 500 freaking kilometers and still have these little nipple thingies on here. Yeah, they've, I've been uh, getting people calling me that has been sometimes had it for two or three years yep. in this 445 size and some different options and everybody I've talked to is very, very happy with the tire compared to the 16.5, 16.1. So. Awesome. That's cool. I'm looking forward to this. I, I can see we have a little bit of grease coming out here from the move. We did put new bearings on these bad boys before the, uh, before the spring, but... So, so how long, so when did you get out here, John? Because you left at like, <laughs> you left at some unridiculous uh, I hour. I think it was about, uh, oh, 5, 5.30. You got out here at 5.30? Yeah. And well, how long of a drive is it? It's full of Google Maps and it was probably about close to four hours, three and a half hours. So you guys do the math. 
That means like no sleepish, give or take, or very little, a couple hours. Well, we'll get sleep, but <laughs> we have to get you seating. This guy's a machine. This guy's a machine. So I really appreciate that you would come all the way out here and do this. No problem. How long did it take to change that tire? That wasn't too long. It's a good, uh, good two hours a bit, maybe two and a half. Is it just due to it hasn't been off before, or is it? it the, the, it was just the first speed was... Couldn't first break it? speed was a lot of... They could break it, prying it over took a lot of yeah. loose. Yeah. Well, I'm surprised that you can even change these things by yourself. I think I'd need about seven of me to get these things changed. Yeah, we got the crane truck and all <laughs> that, but this this one tire, the first one, the first speed was kind of a lot, a lot of work. So. Okay. Well, I won't hold you up. I'll let you uh, keep cracking. So this is the tire uh, that actually went on us on the road. Right. And that's we had the new one, That's right? the new one that we're going to get replaced. Yeah. You're going to take that one on trade then? We'll take it on trade. Take it on trade, and then we're going to put these matching set of we'll BS up and we'll see what the roadies like on these yeah because it's got to go back i'm quite excited about it we put these on quite a few carts uh, like rain carts? carts oh seed carts? carts okay and, uh, we also got the vf on a tractor of the colony the 800 uh, 7038 it had totally changed the ride and flotation and really? for them so. so how much air are say is in like the original tire versus the tire that you're putting on are you putting any these, less these air are taking 35 psi so okay. I, the max load on these is 35 psi so i set it to 35 for now okay. i've also been talking to barry taylor who's the uh, yokohama alliance rep for canada okay uh, he's gonna get back to me today to see if we're gonna adjust any of the air pressure okay. and give you some information for your okay. trip back too, okay so. yeah it's gonna be a longer trip back is it yeah because we were 75 or 80 miles north of our farm when they took it so uh, it's going to be a longer trip back. We're we're really uh, pushing uh, limits of tires, I think. But I guess uh, we got to do it. Uh, like the VFs on the back held up. I, want, yeah. I really want to see what these do for you on okay. the on the way back. I okay. think you're going to be fine okay. with, the, with the stronger tire and the better yeah. carrying capacity. Because okay. every when you're roading and you're speed and you generate heat, you yeah. lose carrying capacity. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if we're starting off with more carrying capacity, we should level out to where yeah. we need to be. Well, I'm excited. And really, you can't go with anything other than a tractor tread, right? Like, I, was, I, I haven't seen anything yet for roading in this size. Yeah. Uh, maybe there is an option or somebody will make one, but for the most part, it's a tractor tread, yeah. Yeah. And I would think that we probably almost have to have a tractor tread just when we're in the field because, like, uh, this helps us steer the drill around and hold, the, yeah. hold that cart when it's loaded back there. I wouldn't think a diamond tread would do it. Okay. But well, that's not like the the tractor tread is not was really necessarily causing the heat. Right? Oh, it's, it's not. No, it's it's the load, right? It's the load. Is it when you're traveling, it, it, you're reducing your carrying capacity, right? Okay. Carrying capacity is a max carrying capacity for like five kilometers an hour or your or your working speed. Yep. And then the faster you go, your carrying capacity drops. So, is there any? There's no wire in these sidewalls. Or is there wire in these Yeah, it's a radial tire. It's a radial tire. So what's the difference? Because those 16 fives that we took off, there's no wire in no, right? Those are a bias tire, so it's the so old I get bias. confused between the bias, bias and the radio. Are, bias is like nylon cords. Okay, so it's so the it's old nylon. school type thing. So okay. it's just ni nylon cords that are weaved weaved it out. Okay. And that's, they actually come with there's a the bead package and the bead bundle, but the bias cords are actually the apply, right? So there's more bias cords for oh, every okay. apply. Okay. When you go to a radial tire uh, you still have the you still have the bead package, but you have the the, the radial belts are like a, a tension, right? Okay. So the stronger the tire, the, the stronger the steel. Okay. Not, not more steel, but the stronger the steel. Stronger the steel. Okay. You guys got that? There's gonna be a pop quiz at the end of this. <laughs> and, that, and that's what with radials. That's what really helps with generating less generating less heat. Let's okay. Say the bias in the back. Yeah. Because if you to get the strength, if you gotta do more and more and more plies, you're gonna create more heat, right? Okay. 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 Well. Uh, been learning a lot about tires here. Sorry about the wind, but I know you guys have some questions like, Mike, why don't you just get another drill? Why don't you use your father-in-law as well? Uh, father-in-law is still seating, and we're done. So, lots to bring mine up here and get stuff done. I'm not scared of moving anything, you guys. Moving to us is second nature. Um, we look at a 70, 100 mile move, like it's no big deal, and then we'll turn around and jog 50 miles at uh, a different direction and then come back so obviously to us moving is second nature um, you don't spend a ridiculous amount of money on these drills just to have them sit they best get used that's my two cents about it these drills are we're on our sixth season with these drills 
and all the tires are original with the exception I think on the old 16.5s that we took off I think we had one or one for sure blow maybe it was two because they always go ditch side so what I mean by ditch side is that those two tires right there on the back and uh, the right hand side big tire right there you're always on the ditch when you're meeting people you're always it's, it takes the most abuse is what I'm trying to say so if you're ever gonna have a flat tire if you're ever gonna have a bearing go you're always gonna have it ditch side first so I think we've gone through maybe one or two back tires on ditch side, but otherwise it's still original. So those big tractor tires up front, they've still done pretty good at how much we move for six years. Um, so this move may have pushed them over the edge, but you know what? They were going to go next year anyway. So. But you guys know I like to push things. There, you cannot have a Mike Mitchell in the sentence without pushing stuff to their max. Um, that's what I'm known for. That's that's what I enjoy doing. And uh, I don't. We don't spend ridiculous amounts of money for these things just to look at them. So they got to go. And as far as roading goes, the only thing that you're gonna, the only thing that you're gonna wear out, is your tires, and your bearings. Otherwise, you're fine. Tires and bearings, that's the, and these big cart tires, they'll go a long time because there's no weight on them, right? The cart's just bouncing back there. It's, it's empty, it's light. It's the drill because it's heavy, it's loaded. And then on these tires, there's no little nipple things here. See, here's the difference. Remember the other side? This is ditch side, takes the most wear, takes the most abuse going down the ditch. It's riding on broken pavement half the time. Still dang dang near really good it might have a little bit of wear right here on the edge hard to tell could just be the sun too but uh really impressive though this bearing's leaking a little bit too i'll have to pop the caps off of these things uh, and maybe tighten them up pack them full of more grease again before it takes its voyage back home uh, later on this summer Yeah, here's our 16.5s that we put on for spares. So that's the difference That's the old-school tire and uh, I'm hoping That these puppies are the future Okay, John, I'm gonna go do some spraying. I'm gonna let you uh, carry on and finish this. I really appreciate it no you, have a good one. All right, we're running off and uh, we're gonna go do some spraying. You guys have yourself an awesome one. I have the best subscribers on all YouTube, so thanks for that and uh, thanks for following us around. Huge shout out to John and uh, Fountain Tire there in Moose Jaw. Customer service when you're working with zero sleep, spot on. Stay awesome.